Hey, everybody. Begin right away with uh, questions for Kurt. You raise your hand, please. Let us know. Your first question will come from first row to your right. Hi, Kurt. Um, Becky was just saying that she thought Kelsey Plum being able to get downhill was a huge difference, or really the difference between game two and game one. How did you see that impacting the game and just get the aces going offensively? Yeah, I thought they, uh, <clears throat> you know, made a concerted effort to get the ball in the paint and their schemes to um, get people um, didn't hurt us as much as just tremendous one-on-one -on -one play that got into the paint all night and they shot 71% uh, inside the arc for the game. And, you know, they flipped uh, points in the paint, you know, and just dominated that area. Um, and it was mostly off the bounce, you know, there were some slips and other things, but it was mostly off the bounce. And a lot of times, not every time, but a lot of times it was just one-on-one -on -one. And, and Kelsey led to charge there just was relentless um, in the paint. Kurt's uh, second row to your left. Hey, Kurt. Um, I'm curious how you thought the jumbo lineup worked. I mean, initially you guys went on, I think it was a 12-4 run, and then A's, the Aces seemed to adjust. What do you think they did to counter it? Yeah, I thought it, there were stretches where our um, big, big lineup um, did some good things, um, changed some of the matchup, our physicality at times. Um, we had a nice stretch when the chess match and we scored a couple possessions in a row against their zone, which they have gone to and we've gone big and, and got them out of their zone. Uh, but there was runs back at us with that with that big lineup also. So, again, it just, uh, you know, we just, you know, felt like we were playing catch up all night because we couldn't string together consecutive stops. And again, we're trying to find disruption. We're trying to keep this, you know, high powered offense out of rhythm. And tonight we really struggled to do that. Uh, just one moment. Uh, anyone heading to the Connecticut locker room, just trying to advise folks there. Anyone here? Okay. Thank you. Next question will come from zoom. We're going to go two questions. Owen, you're up. You're followed by Steven. Owen, go ahead. Hi coach. Uh, you've played against Asia for years. I'm just curious, what is different about the level that she's at right now? First, you know, I just have great respect for how, um, you know, how her fitness, nutrition, I mean, she is, she just can log minutes and play the same way from the start to finish. And um, she's so explosive right now, so physical she plays through contact. Um, and, you know, it's just been really impressive. Um, Next up, Stephen. Stephen, you'll be followed by Lila. Hey, coach. So in the second quarter, you guys were able to draw even at 22-22, heading into the, um, well, 22-22 specifically in the second stanza. What was it specifically that allowed you guys to get back into the game in that stretch? And what was it that showed up in that in that specific part of the game that didn't show up in the second half. Yeah, I thought we in, in the second quarter, uh, more than most of the game, um, we settled in and got some stops and found some rhythm. We played with the big lineup. We are three all-star post players. You know, they shot 63% from the field tonight. They did a lot of really good things. They got to the foul line between those three all-star post players 16 times alone with those three players. So we had stretches when our, our bigs had, had good moments. Um, it was hard to sustain uh, when, when we were inconsistent with our guard play again. Uh, well, returning to Zoom, Lila, you're up. Lila, you'll be followed by Nancy. Hey, Kurt. Um, you know, you guys have talked throughout this postseason of kind of, you know, managing you know, the pressure and, and not letting game get it, not letting things get too tight. How do you manage that now going into an elimination game at home? You know, um, you can't think big picture. Um, that becomes overwhelming and daunting and feels, um, you know, at times um, bigger than it's too big. So you, you got to you got to drill it down and Lila will get back to work with our preparation for game three and all we talk about is game three. And in particular, all we're going to talk about is the first quarter. 
And that that's our approach. I think if you start thinking we have to win three in a row, we have to do, um, you know, those kind of things, it becomes big. Um, so, you know, we're going to talk about game three and game three only and and be ready for that first quarter. Next question from Zoom. Nancy, you're up. Hey, Kurt. Um, what has been the difference for Chelsea Gray? She's just been a, a completely different player in these playoffs. And you you all seem to be able to contain her a little bit in the first half. And then second half, she just did what she's been doing all playoffs. What what did you see difference in the first and the second half? And again, what did, what have you seen her do differently in these playoffs? You know, it's just, um, you know, I've, I've, I've said this a, a few times. There are a ton of really talented players in this league that make open shots. A ton of really talented players that make open shots. Chelsea Gray makes contested shots. She makes incredibly difficult contested shots. And uh, um, it, it's a skill um, that she can be guarded and closed out on and with hand in her face and has the, you know, separating her from a lot of people in this league that she can make those kind of shots. I mean, again, tonight um, of her nine baskets, we got a hand up. We got into her space as well as we could and you know it's still a high percentage of those nine baskets that went in tonight uh, were really well contested and you know other players that you play against um you know won't, wouldn't would not make nine shots like that it's just really separating her right now kurt returning to the room second row center um, hi, Coach. It looked like the Aces spacing was a little bit better in game two as compared to game one. Did you feel like there was anything that they did to kind of manipulate that spacing better, or was there game plan things that weren't executed on your side? Yeah, I think I think that moments in when they did get penetration, we got deflections and got some, you know, turnovers. It, you know, doesn't, we need more. We need more than eight um, against them that only equated in the six points. I have to go back and look at the film and see, you know, did they improve their spacing a little bit? I just really, I mean, Kelsey Plum and, and company just got off our hips all night one-on-one -on -one. and more discouraging was they got to their strong hands a lot. And, uh, you know, we have to take away their strong hands. Next question will come from Zoom also from Mike. Mike, go ahead. Hey, Coach, great seeing you again. Um, when you look at the first two quarters, do you think when you look my part of me, when you look at the first couple quarters of the first two games, the first quarter was always one of the most difficult ones. And I feel like Vegas gets off to such a strong start. It's it's rather frustrating. And what do you need to do in game three in order to stop that? Yeah, win the jump ball and make that layup again. That was nice. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, we, again, first quarters have been a big part of uh, our entire three series. And, you know, it sets the tone for the game. So we have to find some disruption. We have to, to string together some stops early in the game. Um, they were terrific in that first four to five minutes in game one. Tonight, again, um, they shot a really, really high percentage um, for most of that first quarter. Thanks, Coach. Kurt, thank you. thank you. To our media, our Aces players are on the way. Questions for Aces players? Oh, didn't see that coming. Okay. All right. Let's go one. Throw a dart. Sorry. All right. 